I've been a top player at MLB The Show since MLB 20, and every year I felt like I've gotten consistently better at the plate. So I'm gonna go through and show you all my settings and what you should be using as well so you can become a better hitter this year. So for me, since I'm one of the better players in the world, I play a lot of my games on Legend, but I know that is not what most of you guys are gonna play on. The average normal MLB The Show player is gonna play on All-Star. So personally, I would tell you guys to hit on Hall of Fame. Hit on something that is a little bit harder for you so that when you do hop back into rank, All-Star is gonna seem like a breeze for you. And then if you're a type of player who's maybe struggling to get into World Series, maybe try taking some batting practice on Legend. Legend, test yourself a little bit because when you get to that next level you're gonna feel prepared and if anything is too difficult for you maybe tone it down a notch maybe drop it down a difficulty until you can feel more comfortable with it and then you can hop into the next one but first we're gonna go over to my control settings and you're gonna want to be using zone hitting interface if you want to be somewhat decent at this game at least you got to be using zone hitting if you've never used it before it will take you a little bit getting used to but trust me once you get it down once you feel comfortable with it you'll never want to go use anything else now I don't really mess with the PCI anchor or anything I have it set to free but I haven't used it this year at all it allows you to put your PCI anywhere in the zone without essentially having to hold it there with the left stick you you can put your PCI there, click in the left stick, and the PCI will stick there so you don't have to hold it there essentially. But the meat and the potatoes here, the hitting settings are your PCI. Now I use the bat for the center, a basic inner, there's a ton of color options that you can use in about 80% transparency. PCI is just always personal preference. I really like the bat PCI this year, but I do like having that basic PCI for the inner as well. It gives me a sense of how much I have to work with because the bat PCI does not change size based on difficulty. I like having the inner on there so I can genuinely see how much I have to work with to square the ball up. Next, we're going to go over to your camera settings. Now, Strike Zone, in my opinion, is the best hitting camera in the game. You could dabble into Strike Zone 2, Strike Zone High. You're going to want to be on some rendition of Strike Zone. A lot of top players just use regular Strike Zone. It's what I prefer to use. I just have my in play view offense at Dynamic. Just a couple other settings that I have here. Now, another thing that will take your game to the next level is getting a gaming monitor that has at least a one millisecond response time. Back in MLB 20, I used to play on this massive like 60 inch TV with no game mode. And I always told myself, oh, it can't be that much a difference. And I would compete for top 50s on this massive TV that would have massive input lag. And when I went to a monitor, my mind was blown just how much easier the game felt to me. And while a lot of TVs nowadays do have an integrated game mode in them, and they might even have a one millisecond response time, but having a monitor that's anywhere from about 24 to about 27 inches is the best size monitor that you can have. Trust me, just please take my word for it. It's one of those things where you probably don't believe it until you actually have it in your hands and see how much of a difference it is but i promise you getting a good gaming monitor will improve your game 100 now another thing i'd like to talk about here is control freaks i use control freaks for hitting right now i'm using the low rise galaxy so as you guys can see this is my left analog stick this is my right one this is for pitching this one's for hitting now i like the low rise analog as you can see it adds a little bit of height to your analog stick and it has grip on it as well so it allows you to move the pci a little bit more precisely and it gives you that extra grip too so you can hit those really tough in between pitches the ones that aren't right down the middle but the ones that aren't directly on the corner as well okay so now we're in custom practice which is where you want to spend most of your time if you want to become a better hitter i like facing corbin burns because he has a good pitch mix he has that sinker cutter and he's one of the toughest pitchers in the game so i'm just gonna hop in here with mike trout and what i always do is because i want to get as many reps in as i can i'm gonna select every single part of the zone here so that way no matter what he's throwing me it's going to be a strike if you're struggling maybe with you know a certain pitch or if you're struggling on chasing you might not want to enable any of the zones but personally i think you want to enable every pitch in the strike zone because the key here is you want to get better at actually hitting the baseball so as you can see here this is the pci that i'm working with i just have the the bat pci with the basic inner and i'm just trying to make solid contact here having that circular dot from the bat with the basic pci as well gives me a general setting of what i have to work with as you can see there he's throwing me a bunch of different pitches and i'm not really slamming to the corner i'm being very smooth and precise with my pci one thing i always try to tell myself is i don't want to hear the that's when you know when you hear that is when you're not hitting well if you're slamming to the corner every time you're not going to be hitting pitch. The only pitches you're going to be hitting is that pitch on the corner. So you want to be smooth and precise. My goal, every time I'm hitting, unless the pitch is directly on a corner like this, 
I don't want to hear my analog stick clicking at all. I want to be very smooth. I want to be very precise and I just want to make solid contact. A lot of it is just trying to get my timing down. And like I said, Corbin Burns is tough. And there we go. That's a decent swing. And that's all we're looking to do. You know, not every swing we're trying to hit is a homer. I'm just trying to get my swing timed up. I just want to get some reps in before, you know, maybe hopping into online. And like I said, Legend isn't one a lot of you guys are probably going to be playing. So you could turn this down to All Star. You can put it on Hall of Fame. Find something that is comfortable for you. And then once it becomes too easy, up the difficulty. I think something else that's really good this year you can pick pitches to be strikes and balls so for example if you struggle say with a righty righty tendency with sinkers you can turn off every other pitch you can turn the sinkers up all the way so if i want to practice sinkers as a strike and a ball a lot of people are going to try to get you to chase that sinker inside so if you're struggling with this pitch you can pretty much narrow everything down to a sinker inside as a strike and as a ball so it helps you recognize, be like, oh, I have to swing at that one or no, I want to lay off of it. It's going to be a ball. And it also works the other way around. You could do lefty lefty sinkers inside. You can do, for example, a lot of people might struggle with a cutter, same handedness away. So what I, I personally struggle with sometimes are these cutters low and away, high and away, but also I don't want to chase them either. So I could tailor my custom practice settings to just cutters away righty righty if there's just a certain pitch I want to work on and maybe if I'm chasing that pitch outside of the zone a lot it's something that I want to work on so custom practice is going to be your best friend every single year even if you just have 10 15 minutes of your time you say you don't want to hop into an online game spend some time in custom practice it's the best way to get better at the game I go almost undefeated to world series nearly every year I'm always at the top of the leaderboards every single year. One thing that some people might tell you that I disagree with is, especially for legend, if that's what you're looking for, is to turn the sliders up for pitch velocity and pitch break. And they'll tell you, oh, if you're struggling with pitch speeds, crank it all the way up. I don't personally like that because you're practicing something that you're never gonna see in game. The pitch speeds and the pitch break will not be like that in game. So if you're practicing that over and over and over, you're never gonna actually see the ball move like that in game. And this game is all about timing mechanisms. If you're getting into that timing of that really fast pitch speeds and the really fast pitch break, once you hop into an online game, it's gonna mess with you because you're not used to what online play actually is. So that's why I say personally, don't mess with the settings. If you wanna do one thing, maybe potentially just up the pitch velocity slider by like one tick and that's it. But I wouldn't really go anything crazy beyond that. Custom practice, you're just trying to get your timing down and you just wanna make solid contact. A lot of the time I also get asked, what am I looking at when I'm hitting too? So right now, what I'm always looking at is I'm just like you would in a real baseball game. You're looking at the pitcher's release point right by his face, basically. Right now, I'm staring at Corbin Burns' head and I'm looking a little bit to the left of him. So like right here is where I'm looking for that release point, right where that circle is for my PCI. I'm genuinely just looking right there, looking for that release point, looking for the ball coming out of his hand because your PCI essentially should just be something that's in the background. You don't want to be staring at it the entire time. And again, I'm just looking at Corbin Burns' release point here. Not looking at his glove. I'm not looking at his leg. I'm just looking at his release point. And again, we're just getting perfect, perfect after perfect, perfect. Once you pick up that timing, you're just looking at that release point, trying to read what the pitch is out of the hand. So another thing I want to touch upon is pitcher tendencies. Now, this is going to vary player by player, but depending on who you're playing, a lot of the time they like to do the same thing a lot. So say maybe they like to start off a righty with a sinker inside and then they go to a cutter away and then they go to a changeup. You could pick up on that as the game goes on and you can kind of have an idea of what pitch is going to come next. Just a big thing about hitting too is getting in a hitter friendly count. You don't want to be swinging at everything when you get in game. It's like the exact opposite of custom practice where you don't want to swing at everything. You want to take your pitches, get into good counts. And then once you get in your good counts, you're probably going to get a better pitch to hit. 
A lot of people are just swing happy in this game. They love to swing at the first pitch and I can't lie, I'm guilty of it too sometimes. But you wanna work the count, you wanna get that pitcher's pitch count up and you wanna try to get a good pitch to hit. You wanna look for something over the middle of the plate. Again, you don't wanna have to try to hit these pitches on the corner unless say there's maybe two strikes. A pitch like that sinker right there, right over the middle of the plate. That's a good pitch to swing at in game. That's the pitches you wanna be swinging at. You don't wanna be chasing obviously. A pitch like that that I just missed, that's another pitch that you'd want to be swinging at. You don't want to have to try to fight off these pitches on the corner all the time or slam your PCI everywhere. Those are the, going to be the hard pitches to hit. You're looking for something over the middle, down the middle, a little bit inside maybe with a righty. You want to turn on the ball. Now something else I like to do here in custom practice is sometimes you're just naturally going to get into a slump, right? No matter what you do, you can hop in custom practice, you could be mashing the ball, and then you hop into an online game and you look like the worst player in the world, right? Sometimes I just have a hard time recognizing pitches again, even though, like I said, I'm just looking at the release point. Sometimes I just like to get my mental timing back. I'll hop into custom practice here. I won't take a swing and I'll just watch the ball come out of his hand. I'll just watch the pitch come into the zone and try to you know, maybe put my PCI on it, but not swing. Just to try to get that mental timing back, trying to recognize the pitches, trying to get the mental aspect back on track. Again, I play this game at the highest level nearly every day when this game is in its prime. I play against some of the best players in the world. And the only way to get better at this game is by spending time in custom practice. And just like anything in life, the more you do something, the better you're gonna get at it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this hitting tips video. Please let me know down in the comments if I missed anything. I'm happy to answer any questions that you guys have. Like I said, hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys in the next video.